It's actually not my time to speak. I'm introducing the speaker who is going to introduce me. Uh, but this per if Techstars was a person, this person would be, this guy would be that person. He is the, the uh, chief evangelist, the uh, flown to every single program since 2014, including the day one of every program at Techstars Tulsa. Um, I don't know how many, 10 million miles on every airline, I don't know. <laughs> but everybody, I would love, it is my honor and pleasure to introduce you to John Hill. Before we start, I want to take a selfie with all of you. So, <laughs> count of three. One, two, three. Woo! You gotta bring your arms up. One more time. <laughs> One, two, three. Woo! Oh, that's awesome. So, I, I'm John Hill. Uh, as Trey said, I'm the evangelist for Techstars. It's a fancy term for storyteller. Um, for the first seven years at Techstars, I built the network. So, I was VP of network, cross connecting founders, mentors, investors, corporate partners, community leaders together. And uh, we ended up building one of the largest, most effective entrepreneurial networks in the world. Uh, when I first came on board, that was a little bit of hyperbole. It is not the case now. Uh, in 2015, we acquired Up Global, and we run Startup Week and Startup Weekend in 170 countries. We have 53 accelerators in 15 countries, and so um, we do span the globe. And uh, for me, um, entrepreneurship, the founders here, are a personal mission. Uh, this has never been a job, and uh, it's representative of some of the pathway that I had. So if I flash you back to 1997, um, a newly minted journalism graduate working at a national sports magazine in Nashville, Tennessee. I, I was a journalism and history major. My dad thought I was allergic to money. Um, and I, the CEO of our publishing company came into my office and said, hey, you're the youngest person here. We need to start a website. Can you help us out? I had no technical acumen, and I, the only reason he came to me was because I was young, but I'm like, sure, I'll help you out. Ended up hi hiring a programmer, built a website, but realized there was a business there, and in Web 1.0, could spin that out from that publishing company. So here I am in 1998 building a tech company in Nashville, Tennessee. For those of you who have a long memory, there was no capital, there was no community, there was no mentorship, no spin outs in Nashville, Tennessee. And what I found was it was a really lonely experience. When I left that company, when I moved on to my next opportunity, I vowed to help founders any way, shape, or form I could for the rest of my career. So, uh, flash forward to 2009, I'm the Director of Alumni Career Services at Michigan State University. If you think about that timing, uh, that was not good. Uh, the automotive industry literally drove off the cliff. And uh, Michigan State University was an hour drive from the big three. We had 250,000 alumni in the state of Michigan who were directly or indirectly impacted by automotive. And I uh, ended up doing some really unique things with LinkedIn that got me hired by LinkedIn later. But as my side job, we tried to change the wind in the state around automotive and government. We tried to support entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, innovators within the state. And a group of about 70 of us in Detroit, Ann Arbor, Flint, uh, Lansing, and Grand Rapids brought the first TEDx to the state of Michigan, brought the first Ignite, first Startup Weekend, started the first University Accelerators, started the first creative spaces, the first incubators within the state. And we did that with no support other than each other. And it was a community. And from that point forward, I realized the importance of community with everything we do around entrepreneurship. Kauffman Foundation did a report in 2021 where they looked at the amount of new starts for companies in the US. Uh, that full year, it was 0.36%, which means out of 100,000 people, only 360 started a company. You're already a unicorn before you try to be a unicorn. 
And we have to celebrate those people in every way, shape, or form that we can. And now, unlike what it was like for me in Nashville in 97, you have a room like this in Tulsa, Oklahoma, supporting entrepreneurs. And uh, we are all here for the same reason. I can prove that out real quick. By a show of hands, how many of you would support any entrepreneur in this room? Now, if you don't raise your hand, you're going to hell. <laughs> Uh, and I don't have that power and I'm Irish Catholic, so I'm gonna feel guilty about that for the next 24 hours. But the point is, all of you raised your hand. You are in this, right? So you're gonna have 12 companies coming up here and pitching their life's work, their heart to each one of you. And I wanna pre-practice how you're gonna represent them uh, as they both come on and go off stage. So at the count of three, you are going to get as loud as possible in this room. All right? One, two, three. That was like audible golf clap. That was like, uh, that was like Dallas level. You can do much better than that. All right, count of three. One, two, three. That was, that was actually pretty good. Uh, I, I have no comeback on that one. Uh, so uh, Trey asked me, I think, like a year ago to do this, to do a demo day. I uh, do a talk called Power of the Network in every one of our programs. And uh, I've been coming to Tulsa for, is this? We're four or three right now. Three, third, all three programs in person, uh, flying from Boston, Massachusetts, uh, because this means the same it meant when I was in Lansing, Michigan. Um, you know, it, it takes a group of people supporting everybody who walks on this stage. Every one of you in this room, thank you on behalf of Techstars uh, for being here. And let's get this show going. I'm going to hand it back to Trey. Take my victory lap real quick. I knew it was going to be a, a mistake to follow John Hill, but here we are. <laughs> um, last year was my 20th year as an entrepreneur. Started my first business in 2003. Uh, I'm not done. You, you can hold your applause. <laughs> my 10th year investing in startups. Let me. The X. My 10th year investing in startups, and uh, this week is actually my second year at TechStars. And thank you. Now you can talk. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and for everybody that, that really knows me, you'll, uh, you'll understand how important it is that I hit those milestones in Black Wall Street. So, so I want to just start by expressing my gratitude to everybody in the community. Um, as John Hill uh, expressed, community is, is everything, especially when you're starting in a new market. And um, when I want to express my appreciation for you all letting me be a part of this and the support um, of, for not only myself, but the Techstars program here. But most importantly, I would like to thank my small but mighty team, Brittany, Leticia, James, and Miles. Uh, a lot of work goes into this program and, and they make it look easy and they make it less stressful for me. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, in less than two years, we've deployed over $4 million to 36 companies with underrepresented founders while proving that doing so doesn't mean you have to sacrifice financial performance. In fact, in this short time, our companies have collectively gone on to raise $10 million despite the current difficult fundraising environment. That's right. And hopefully we can double that with this cohort. <laughs> We're also grateful to the 100 plus mentors that support this program, and they're truly the glue and the secret sauce at the center of the power of this Techstars network. Our global partners who provide perks and advice in key areas relevant to startups, and finally, the financial support from our sponsors and our partners 
at Build in Tulsa, who make this all possible. <laughs> Build in Tulsa ladies, are you in here? Can you raise your hands? There we go, there we go. Um, as, as John mentioned, Techstars is the most active pre-seed investor in the world and already uh, one of the most active in Oklahoma in terms of deal volume, but we're just getting started and we have a long way to go. And in this age of unprecedented change, the key to our collective prosperity lies in nurturing a vibrant tech ecosystem. In this city, with its rich history and welcoming spirit, lies the potential to become a beacon of innovation and progress. Supporting these startups is good business, but it isn't just about business. It's about investing in the future. Before today, it was impossible for most of you to co-invest alongside Techstars Tulsa without being an accredited investor. But we can do something different in Tulsa. We can come together and invest as a community. And that's why I'm glad to announce that no matter whether you're an accredited investor or not, we're partnering with Startup OK and one of the major national crowdfunding platforms to give everybody the, the chance to co-invest with Techstars Tulsa with investment minimums in the hundreds, not thousands of dollars. Uh, and that's all I can say about that, but um, for more, <laughs> there will be email updates. Uh, if you sign up for email updates at startupok.org or just follow us on social, um, stay tuned for more info. The key to progress is cooperation and community. And I'm proud to be a, I'm proud to be a part of this one. So now I'd like to introduce you to our program manager, Brittany Nixon. Program <laughs> coordinator. Sorry, Leticia. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all very much. So in the first two weeks of programming, collectively our founders met with over 108 mentors. Companies focused on FinTech, commerce enablement, climate tech and food waste, digital health, productivity, software, gaming, you name it, we got it. Today is not merely an event. It is a three minute peek into the future. It's an invitation to witness the traction and development of transformative ideas to engage trailblazing companies that are shaping tomorrow's world. Being a CEO is not just about numbers. We have created community, relationship, giving them the tools to function as a true CEO and not just somebody that knows business. It is my pleasure to introduce to you our CEOs, our founders, our friends, and most importantly, a group of 12 wonderful humans that have strived, collaborated, and accelerated together. I present to you companies that are worthy of your listening ears, your time, and your money. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our Techstars Tulsa 2003 fall class. I don't know what you've been told, but time is running out, no need to take a slow, I'm stepping to your toe. Hi everyone, my name is Salman. I am founder and CEO of Torque 360. In US, technicians grapple with 69 million car breakdowns annually, alongside the routine service maintenance of 230 million cars. The weight of needless administrative torque is crushing this industry. Now imagine, for instance, the chaos of a Monday morning rush when you are running late for work and your car decides it's a perfect time to break down. Oh God. Now, panic sets in as you realize the looming hassle, arranging a tow, figuring out alternative transport, and worrying about the repair costs. Now, multiply this frustration 
by picturing repair shops drowning in paperwork, struggling with outdated inventory management system, but unable to provide you guys smooth customer experience. That's the daily struggle Torque aims to solve, revolutionizing the automotive industry. Torque is a user-friendly tool which is designed to streamline all the aspects of their business operations. Technicians can schedule appointments, they can inspect vehicles, they can gain digital approvals and order inventory, all with just a click of a button. And with Torque Pay, financial management becomes breeze, consolidating all the needs into just one platform. This is our five second invoice checkout process, which is saving hundreds of hours of our technicians. <laughs> Thank you. Now, what makes our team truly special is our proven success in SaaS. I was previously the chief operating officer in Repair Desk, a vertical SaaS mobile repair company. Scaled them to three million dollar in ARR within just three years. Now, it's a huge industry of 800 billion dollars, where in US alone we are looking at more than 400,000 businesses in our serviceable addressable market. We make money through software subscription and payment processing fee. Our potential revenue is set to achieve 30 million in ARR by 2028, based on our average ticket size projections. Uh, we have made significant tractions in 2023 with 3,000 B2B signups, hundreds of paid customers, 125,000 in total revenue, and 10% month-over-month -month growth. We have signed a deal with CarX, which is nation's one of leading automotive service centers, having 160 stores across US, and the deal is worth $100,000. In our comparative landscape, the reason we are right in the center is because we are the only player in the market who's offering shop management solution in 360 degrees with unrivaled UI UX designed for customers of any age and technical background. Seamless payment with Torque Pay and with integrated CRM and review management, our customers can 20x their business reviews. On the top of all of that, our unit economics played a very important role. We are the, we are the one who is making them so jealous <laughs> because our product team is based out of Pakistan and they're able to provide 24 by seven customer support. And with our customer acquisition costs being so low, they feel really jealous. <laughs> <laughs> we are raising $1.2 million in order to hit our next milestone of 1,000 auto repair businesses, which will take us to approximately $1 million in ARR within this year. We'll utilize these funds in expansion of sales team and support, enhancing the software features and integrations, uh, hiring a qualified legal firm to take care of our US matters, and marketing and outreach to put some ads on Google, Facebook, and uh, YouTube to enhance brand awareness. Again, my name is Salman. I'm founder and CEO of Torque 360. Let us join hands in revolutionizing automotive industry. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Lanre, founder, CEO, CarbonX Inc. At CarbonX Inc., we are turning carbon waste into black gold. Since the dawn of the electronic age, we have become more and more reliant on batteries to power our homes, our cars, our electronics, and industries. As their demand increases, so does the demand for the materials that create them. Let me introduce you to graphite. Graphite is an essential component of every battery. Currently, the annual global consumption of graphite has reached a staggering 1.3 million metric tons, valued at $12 billion. And that is expected to reach 
11.2 million tons by 2040. But here is the catch. Over 90% of the global market of graphite is controlled by one country, China. So if this is allowed to continue, there will be a deficit of around 8 million metric tons in the United States alone by 2040. If this is allowed, I mean, there should be a solution. This is a national security crisis. And there is a need to develop a domestic solution that addresses techno-economic and sustainability challenges. That is why you have cabinets. <laughs> At Cabinets Inc., we have developed a patented process that utilizes industrial waste from carbon industry to produce 3D graphene that compares favorably with graphite. Our technology incorporates decarbonization into secularity to address current pains in the refineries, coal plants, and graphite ecosystems. We are not just talking. We have validated our process, our technology, through third party evaluation, using what? Spectroscopic, microscopic, and crystallographic analysis of the structural morphology. <laughs> what? Our findings. <laughs> so our findings show that we have a 3D graphene that is crystalline, pure. And also, when you look at the economic and environmental assessment, what does it bring? It shows that for every one kilogram of 3D graphene produced, we generate 3.7 kilograms in carbon savings. And now that there is a solution, a domestic solution to a national crisis, it means that we provide manufacturers, consumers with benefits. What kind of benefits? We're talking about economic, environmental, economic, environmental, and governance benefits. As a result, Carbonance Inc. is well positioned to disrupt and capture a significant portion of the three major graphene markets valued at over $100 billion. Are we, the, are, are we the only one in this? No, we are not the only one in this space. There are a few companies, there are a few 3D graphene companies currently invading the graphite market space. However, Cabinet Inc. outperforms these competitors in terms of sustainability, scalability, cost, and of, and of course, purity. We are not just about technology. We are composed of experienced individuals and backed by, one, uh, and backed by the leading investors in the world, Textiles. <laughs> With prototype proven, patent granted, bench scale demonstration completed, now we are looking to unlock opportunities to become the global leader in our core industries. Why are we in Tulsa? There is a reason for that. Our interest in building our technology in Tulsa is motivated by the abundant resources and friendly environment for growth and success. Just in Tulsa alone, just in Oklahoma alone, over the next 10 years, Carbonus Inc. is set to generate $15 billion in revenue and $5 million in carbon savings. We are looking to secure $2 million in investment to enable us to roll out 
a working pilot towards building a graphene refinery that does not only generate revenue, but enhances the United States supply chain resilience. Also, we are, actively, we are actively seeking connections and introductions to the refineries, aerospace manufacturers, and renewables. Once again, I'm Dr. Lanre, founder, CEO of Cabernet Inc. <laughs> Investing in Carbonex means that you are participating in a groundbreaking solution that capitalizes and maximizes market opportunity. Get involved. <laughs> Join us in this journey. Thank you. Grandmother told me I had to walk up with God, so I had to choose a church song. Amen. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name's Anisha Smith, and I am the founder of Go See the City. We are a municipal food waste compliance platform. In 2015, the USDA and EPA got together to create initiatives around food waste to reduce it by 50% by 2030 and food loss. However, we are six years from that goal. We have high food insecurity rates as well as overflowing landfills. So there's a need to create a solution in order to fix this issue. We are the solution. Over 84% of um, restaurants' food goes uneaten, as well as 1.4% of that gets donated to nonprofits. So we have created a platform that streamlines all of that for municipalities. We uh, provide them tracking and monitoring for all of their partners around food waste, including restaurants, nonprofits, as well as festivals. And we provide them actionable analytics and data in order to be insightful with their decisions. So let's talk about how our platform actually works. Restaurants, actually, before they close for the day, or if you're a stadium or anything, or a food truck, you're able to create a coupon on our platform before the day ends. And with that coupon, we send it out to all of our app users, and they're able to increase the foot traffic of that restaurant or food truck. That creates a zero food waste platform because we take it to another step. Let's say there's additional food left over after that. All of our nonprofits are alerted, and they're able to go and pick up the food, but we're also partnered with DoorDash, and they're able to actually get it delivered to the nonprofit easily. Thank you. We then aggregate all of that data and put it on an easy to use dashboard. So we are the solution to this issue. We have three revenue models, of course, it's restaurants, venues, as well as government partners that we have. And there are, there's great work being done in the area of food waste. There is a lot of people out there. However, we are aligned and position ourselves as the single platform that brings all stakeholders together. Um, by 2026, if we keep on our tra trajectory along with bringing on college campuses, additional stadiums and restaurant uh, partners, we will be at 10 million ARR by 2016. By 2026, wow. sorry. <laughs> 2016 already happened. Um, <laughs> so right now we are raising $1.5 million. We already have over 250K committed. Um, those funds were basically goals mostly towards hiring uh, more expert staff as well as expansion into other areas. Um, as far as being in Tulsa, we've had great traction that we've been able to do. One of the biggest partners we brought on is actually Levy Restaurants. They're one of the top venue management platforms, um, in, I'm sorry, companies in the entire U.S. They do Dodger Stadium. They do OKC. So now um, at the end of NBA games, when there's unsold food, we partner with them to direct it to uh, nonprofits at Oklahoma City. Thank you. We have an expert staff um, ranging in uh, expertise from marketing, sustainability, research, and as well as government. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Hi, everyone. I'm Suchashna Badal, CEO and founder of Mobility Health. I built this company from my own experience as a biotech and engineer. I had to do repetitive motions all day long. As a basketball player in the evening, repetitive motions again all day long. Over years, I developed a very painful lump on my hand, and that made my hand immovable. I went to orthopedic physician, but as you all may relate, that the appointment was five months away. During this time, I couldn't work, I couldn't play, and on the side, I was doing my astronaut training, and I, <laughs> I couldn't even move my hand with the stiff gloves because of the injury. So finally, uh, I got my appointment and realized that I lost 25% functioning of my hand, and the doctor said, you could have come sooner. <laughs> so later on, I realized there are 124 million people like me who, have, who get affected by musculoskeletal injuries. And the problem is that musculoskeletal injury diagnosis currently is in-person only. And there are less number of orthopedic physicians and more number of patients, due to which per orthopedic physician, there are 2,000 people waiting in line to get their appointment. And telehealth diagnosis currently, it does not happen. So Mobility Z Health is a remote diagnosis and screening platform for orthopedic doctors they can virtually screen and diagnose the patients through our web app, which has 95% AIML model accuracy at this point. It's a tech-enabled workflow where the patient registers himself, get analyzed through the app, and finally uh, knows the status of the injury. It's a remote patient monitoring solution with clinician decision support system, where the, which reduces orthopedic burnout, manages care, reduces healthcare costs, provides access to care for patients, and reduces disability. Mobility Z Health can help 60 million people in rural America who do not get specialist care. It's a 70 billion market with the potential to grow to 200 billion with a 23% CAGR. And the healthcare cost in MSK is 329 billion, which could be reduced through this solution. Also, employers pay 167 billion every year for injury claims, and we can reduce that. We have an exceptional competitive advantage being first in the market to have a screening and diagnosis software. Also, we, we differentiate ourselves from our competitors having a telehealth platform that is embedded with software. While our competitors are more in the telehealth aspects and more doing physiotherapy and rehab space, we are working in the consulting and diagnosis. This is an incredible untapped market that we need to achieve. We have two revenue streams, employers and healthcare system and hospitals where we are reducing their cost and also giving more hours back to the surgeon. This way they can earn more, doing more surgery, more strategized workflow, and there is a 30x ROI per hospital. With two tire model, which is enterprise and orthopedic small clinics model, on the employer side, we are, they can reduce 10x in injury claims. And there are CPT codes. We have, a, we have an exceptional team of clinicians and software developers, clinicians being Harvard, Stanford graduate people, and our software developers have built a startup before and took it to acquisition. <laughs> With a remarkable traction, having the patent protected technology, interest from NASA Human Research Program, we internationally published with IAC as well, and currently, we are looking to partner with Methodist, TTU, HSE, who have 180 counties under their belt for virtual care. We have nine LOIs, 200 plus patient interests, and currently, we are looking to partner with uh, employers and hospital care system from Tulsa Ecosystem and Houston. And there are seven in the discussions currently. As we build our beta product, we will go towards more consumer-facing app and further go for medical device. For the initial tranche, we are raising 1.8 million. That will go towards the development. 
I would like to invite you on this revolutionary opportunity to change the face of mosquito skeletal diagnosis so you can save life of millions and, and help them to reduce disability. I, we would like introductions from manufacturing firms, health plans, brokers, and here we are, mobility, health, injury care, anywhere. Thank you. Like we always do with this time, I go for mine, I get to shine, and throw your hands up in the sky. How y'all doing tonight? <laughs> y'all wild, man. <laughs> so my name is Tyrence Billingsley II. I'm the founder and executive director of Black Tech Street. We're working to rebirth Black Wall Street as a premier black innovation economy around cybersecurity, business intelligence, data analytics, and uh, responsible artificial intelligence. So it's easy to know why I'm excited to be up here tonight. I want to start by thanking the man who I'm convinced only owns Rebuild Black Wall Street t-shirts. That's Trey Baker, always wearing them shades. <laughs> Having individuals like him come into the community and have a passion for Black Wall Street and use a platform like Techstars to elevate it is such an incredible thing. You know, I've always said that it's not just about rebuilding Black Wall Street, it's about keeping Black Wall Street globally competitive in the 21st century. And that's what I see when I look at the companies that are coming in through Techstars, through Building Tulsa with Ashley Sims, through Act House with the bald-headed baller, Dominic Artis. It's just incredible things happening all over Tulsa. And I just want you to know, black or white, whether you stay in Tulsa or not, to have your entrepreneurial journey tied to Black Wall Street, the ancestors are proud. Please give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> want to thank you all for being here tonight. We've seen some incredible companies. Y'all got even more coming. So just you know, keep it up. We love y'all. Thank y'all very much. This can't wear skinny jeans cause my knots don't fit No one in the corner got a pocket like this So I rock, rock jeans cause my knots so big You can learn how to dress just by checking my fresh Checking, checking my fresh, checking, checking my fresh Follow my steps, it's the road to success with it No get that right when the girls say yes But I can't teach you my Woo! Let's get it Man, look, good evening. My name is Jay Johnson. I am the CEO and co-founder of Prep Intel, an institutionally funded SaaS platform that helps with the admission process. We streamline using technology such as artificial intelligence as well as machine learning. Best part about it, as a former college recruiter and a current business owner of another business that helped kids get into college, we built this platform for recruiters and it was built by a recruiter. Yeah. One thing I can tell you, when students upload their information to Prep Intel, we can actually take their records. Our technology will actually streamline it and tell them their chances of getting into any institution in nationwide. Most importantly, we promote admission transparency. We also provide curriculum, but overall, we give them access to their recruiters. Now, I can tell you, as someone who helped kids get into college, that's something that you need. You want to give them to the recruiter. But I can tell you also, as a former recruiter, you see that, go dogs. I can tell you one thing. As a former recruiter, there was nothing worse than not having the resources you need in order to get to a new state, a new city to find new students. And so our platform is simple. We allow recruiters to log into uh, Prep Intel, and they will actually be able to search any territory in the country to find the best and brightest students for their needs. But not only just for for-profit colleges or non-profit colleges or vocational, but we also do that for the military. I can tell you one other thing about our market. Now, I'm not going to lie, we love Oklahoma. I mean, we can just get all 280 institutions in this state, and that's like uh, higher education as well as military recruitment offices to make $36 million. But man, $10 billion sure, sure does sound more than that. So <laughs> I'll tell you this, $36 million good a year, but I'm going after $10 billion. Now... So our model is simple, it's not hard. 
we actually let the institutions pick their growth model. I can tell you, organically speaking, we've had 14 growth conversations with institutions that said, hey, we want to grow. And with that, those conversations are worth $1.8 million. Now, here's our advantage. It's very simple. We secure onboarding with all institutional uh, staff. That means our kids will not be subjected to just anyone on our platform. Our technology find the best fit. We enhance that model. Most importantly, we just simplify it. Now, here's our competitors. What I'm going to do, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to tell you what they do really well, all right? One of our competitors actually does great at charging students to connect them to colleges. <laughs> we don't do that. We make it free. Another one of our competitors does an amazing job showing visibility to all the other institutions, but they don't connect them to families. Guess what? We do the same thing, except we connect them to families. And the best one of all, wait for this, they sell a static list to the students, I mean to the colleges better than anyone else. That means that list does not move. Unfortunately, we sell a dynamic list to the institution. Therefore, we're the better option for everyone. Now, let me go ahead and let you know about what we're doing. This quarter, we're gonna launch. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, don't pop that champagne yet because it's a soft launch, all right? No confetti. We're gonna spend the next 12 months really just like enhancing our platform. We're gonna go through the bugs and fix it. We're gonna go through upgrades. We're gonna work with our district partners and institutions to make a better launch in the fall which coincide with the college recruitment process, AKA football season. Now, now look, my team is dynamic, but look, y'all probably tired of hearing me talk, but I'm gonna tell you the true brain behind this is my co-founder, Amber. She's in the, she's in the crowd. Ow. And, so, and so I'll tell you this, she manages our tech team. You know, she's the one that really take that stress out. I just go out and do sales and obviously y'all see, I'm really good at it. Now I can tell you one thing about this. We're right now at the beginning of really revolutionizing what we get ready to do. We will be the post-secondary recruitment platform globally. Now a couple things you can do, you can one, decide to jump on board. That's cool, if you wanna work with us, that's great. If not, two, you can bring people to us. It doesn't matter if it's a kid that's in high school, a high school itself, a college itself, or an army recruitment office. Either way, you're either gonna work with us or work for us, one of the two things. So I give you this one advice. That QR code, if anyone you know that appreciate education, scan the QR code. Jay Johnson, Prep Intel. Alrighty, alrighty. How's everybody doing today? Awesome, awesome, awesome. So my name is Nishe Madapa. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Vols. Now, not too long ago, I was in college, like some of you young lads out there, and I wanted to get the nice, pristine, coveted Amex Platinum credit card for its beautiful rewards and credit building. But soon enough, I realized that, hey, not only can I not get the Amex, I can't get any credit card. <laughs> Oh, it was sad. And the reason was, to get a credit card, you need a credit score. But to get a credit score, you need a credit card. A whole cash 22, I didn't understand. And soon enough, I realized many individuals out there also don't understand the credit system. Why? It's confusing. We don't know why the score goes up or down. We don't even know who really runs it. And that's when I realized if you're credit invisible, there's a lot of problems. You're not gonna get good interest rates on your car loans or mortgages. It's gonna be very difficult to get rental properties, utilities, yeah, you feel me. On top of that, it's also gonna be very difficult to earn money back on what you already do, spending your cash every single day. Hence, that's why we created Vols, the first ever platform that allows users to build credit and earn rewards from your day-to-day -day micro transactions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, how does it work? 
Really simple. Three main things. Number one, we take a look at your reoccurring transactions, your Netflix, your utility bills, and your rental properties, things you already do. But number two is our secret sauce, the consumer credit. That's right. Every time me and Trey go out, grab a drink, split pizza, go to watch the movies. He doesn't really watch that many movies, though. Split an Uber ride. We're building credit all the time. On top of that, finally, we have our financial literacy bot, a AI bot generated by us to let users know how their financial freedom is going, what they can save up for, and how much they can really spend. So we talked about the main categories. How does it work? Really simple. Sign up on the app, use your transactions, connect your different balance accounts like Venmo, Cash App, Zelle. Submit the data by us, and on the next month, you're going to see your updated credit report. Now, all of you guys already have different platforms, so we want to be competitive in this space. So what we really do is we also partner with different businesses out there that allow us to use our credit underlying platform on their full stack. So if you're already using a fintech platform, they can use our SaaS platform to allow their own users to build credit as well. Now, we want to help build credit in the US, but who am I kidding? We're for profit. So how do we make revenue out here? Three main ways. Number one, interchange and transaction fees. Number two, your interest on deposits. And finally, number three, your partnership SaaS agreements. Now, where are we today? We had a 12-week alpha release with over 7,200 users a little while ago. Thank you, thank you. Till date, we have over 32,000 people on the wait list. Now, I want you guys to take your eyes to this number right here. We care about our customers. So we do customer interviews. Over 1,500 interviews done, over 6,800 transactions on the service, over $122,000 worth of customer deposits into our account within 12 weeks. <laughs> Now, we need your help to bring this product live. We already had over 7,200 users in alpha, and through our different partnerships, we expect to have at least a minimum of over 50,000 users in Q1's launch. Now, that's a lot of users, so we're going to need your help and make sure we can raise some capital and have some good tech people on board to build this product up. Already, we're striking over $8,000 in MRR, annualizing that to over 150 k in ARR. Now, we got some pretty powerful partners here. We have TransUnion, Visa, Stripe, making sure your credentials are all safe and secure and you're building credit real time. We're looking to raise $1.5 million to help bring this to everyone in the US and we want to bring down credit invisibility one transaction at a time. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, my name is Danique Sipkas and I'm the founder and CEO of Virtual. Hiring good people is the biggest concern among 74% of startup founders. And early stage startups struggle to attract skilled leadership due to time and money constraints while also building and managing their startup. That leads to debt equity and messy cap tables, founders burning their runway and spending all their time on recruiting. It is clear that we cannot build businesses by ourselves as we spend $32 billion per year just on specialized roles. And as a founder myself, I understand the unique pressure and challenges that come with building a startup and building a team. And this is why Virtual exists. At Virtual, we are offering on-demand specialized roles in product, operations, and development, ready to kickstart your projects from day one. Our teams take charge of crucial areas while freeing up time for founders to spend on their top priorities without the need for interviews or team selection. We are a SaaS platform combining AI with human intelligence. Think 78% less cost and 35 hours per week saved. And a future where businesses run with just 10% human involvement, but attaining 99% efficiency. Yeah. Our secret sauce, Pi, our AI brain. 
Unlike generic language models, pie charts on your industry's data. Imagine having an ever-learning, industry-specific powerhouse, managing your meetings, calendars, and even suggesting tasks. With virtual, founders can collaborate on the whiteboard, uh, tap into fractional team subscriptions, and watch Pi get smarter with every single move. It's a beneficial cycle. The more you do with virtual, the more it will do for you. <laughs> virtual launched December 1st, and we already have $8,000 in monthly recurring revenue. We are raising $1 million to have companies build faster and more efficiency. But for now, it's time to focus on what matters most, which is building your companies. Thank you. Let's hear it for the tax man. <laughs> Screw that guy. <laughs> but seriously, let's pretend that you're a small business accountant and your work's getting audited by the IRS. How do you feel? Great. Nervous? Stressed? Oh, yeah, overwhelmed? <laughs> well, you wouldn't have to feel that way if you were able to proactively hire an external auditor to review your work before you submitted it to the IRS. But that's just not possible. The reason for that is that it costs between five and $20,000 to hire an external auditor, and it takes them a few weeks at least to complete their job. So you're now left submitting accounting work that was done without a third party review, with mistakes being missed, allowing the IRS to issue over 22 billion in civil tax penalties a year. If we are going to improve accounting efficiency, we need to make sure that it's affordable for every small business accountant to be able to get an independent, real-time financial assessment of their accounting accuracy, and that can only be done using software. It's that simple. And that's why I created Equility. A centralized, financial compliance platform that connects all of your financial data, including those documents that are sent to the IRS that trigger an audit, allowing our users to get financial assurance for around $200 a month using software instead of hiring an expensive auditor for one of the big four accounting firms. Crazy, right? The only reason that I can stand up here and uh, speak to that is because we are in the middle of a financial renaissance where more financial data is being accessed and provisioned than ever before. The amount of financial data being accessed using API calls has increased 50% year over year since 2019, and there are now over 53 million API-connected consumer accounts. This is how we take advantage of the opportunity that's being presented to us. Our competitors have yet to see the magnitude of this uh, technological transformation, and while they're focused on team workflow automations, we are zeroing in on the benefits of leveraging AI models and API connected data so that we can provide a unique value proposition to our customers and differentiate ourselves within this space. Our team, freaking amazing. Humbly, I say so. Combined, we have the industry, not only have the industry and technological expertise to scale our platform, but also a CEO and accountant who effing hates accounting because of how antiquated and manual so many of the processes still are. I'm obsessed with the opportunities that technology has to be able to revolutionize this industry. As we move forward, it's important that we control our customer acquisition cost, and we're doing this by making sure that we only target decision makers who can bring at least 20 companies to our platform. This includes accounting firms, small business development corporations, and online marketplaces that are focused on the accounting sector. 
as our product scales, we will be able to improve our value proposition, allowing us to increase our revenue per company and to improve our gross margins. We realize that at this point, our business is as much about the people as it is about our platform. And that's why we're raising 700,000 so that we're able to continue to attract amazing talent and to expand our customer outreach. Thank you very much for your time. My name is Michael Nieto, and it's been a pleasure to speak with y'all. In early Q1, we're launching our fully built MVP platform, and we're excited about being able to transform the accounting industry. Thank you very much for your time. Tech stars. Tech stars. Tech stars was always kind of a dream for us. We wanted to be honored and recognized within the industry. The second that, you know, we really liked that this was a program that followed along with underrepresented founders. And for me, it's been a struggle to be a sole female founder for many years. And this was an opportunity to really shine a light on those of us that are really trying to make waves within the industry, especially in tech. I chose Techstars largely because of the community of mentors and all the founders who have gone ahead of us to build amazing companies. The biggest thing that I've gained from Techstars so far is the acceleration. It's literally in the name. Our business from day one is not going to be the same business that we have on, um, at the end of the program. So allowing us to scale fast um, and to iterate fast has been the biggest thing um, that Techstars has given me thus far. Well, I wanted to be in an ecosystem where I knew that would support not only entrepreneurs, but entrepreneurs in tech. We're happy to be part of Techstars as Techstars has an enormous laundry list of founders and alumni that really can help us push forward our product. On top of that, it has a great amount of perks and rewards that allow founders to be bootstrapped and still build a very strong company. The thing I'm most excited about for this cohort of investors is how much they really understand the problem and the opportunity that they're going after. A lot of founders have a loose association with that, and it's so important to understand the ins and outs of that problem and how to solve it. Gema. It's Gamer Baby. It's Gamer. 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 Hello, Tulsa. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Awesome. My name is Shay. I'm a two-time founder, software engineer, and co-founder at Gamer. Gamer is a platform that connects gamers to tournaments to compete and get paid playing video games. All right. My journey started playing video games very early, but my mom, who got me my first PlayStation, told me I can't make money playing video games. Yeah. However, the world has changed. Yep, it has. Gamer provides a platform for anyone, anywhere to make money playing video games. Powered by our only one platform with our tournament engine, we make gamers to not only connect, compete, but monetize their gaming skills on any game, regardless of the device. Here's how it works. First, gamers download the app to connect. They join tournaments with other gamers with similar skill levels to compete and earn. All this, including receiving payments, are done simply on our mobile app in one single platform. Our vision is bold. We want to be the ultimate platform for anyone, anywhere to make money playing video games. Oh yeah, and we're making progress. We started in Africa, and over the past 24 months, we've significantly grown to over 300,000 users. We've hosted, thank you, we've hosted over 2,000 tournaments, and we've paid out over $100,000 to over 2,000 gamers to pursue their dreams while generating over $400,000 in revenue by helping brands like Hoboton School right here in Tulsa to unlock new acquisition channels. Thank you. We drive revenue in three simple ways. First, we take a cut from prices, we charge tournament organizers a subscription fee to use our platform, and we provide gaming demographic data to, 
to companies to be able to unlock new markets. All right, we're a phenomenal team of entrepreneurs, technologies, and software, and gamers as well. And combined, we have over 25 years experience in gaming, esports, B2B SaaS, and FinTech. And we believe we're equipped to unlock this market opportunity, specifically in mobile, with over a billion daily gamers. Our platform, which focuses on serving communities that are not well served today, we believe we are positioned to unlock this market currently valued at $96 billion. Yep, we are not the only gaming company, I might say, but gamers streamlines the experience for all gamers into one platform. Right, we're expanding and we're bullish about our growth. This year, we're aiming to hit a million dollars in ARR. And so, investors and everyone on the team, we're raising $1.5 million. And so also, we're looking for introductions to institutions who are looking to engage and acquire gamers. If this is you, please scan the QR code on your seats to connect with me. Again, my name is Shay, co-founder and gamer. We allow gamers to make money playing video games. Thank you. And I'll bring you out the, out the darkness. Sweet King Martin. Coretta, sweet brother Malcolm, sweet Queen Betty, sweet mother Mary, sweet father Joseph, sweet Jesus. Hello. Hi, I'm Brian, and as a foster kid, I thought college housing was my easy into adulthood. How wrong was I with seven moves? 22 roommates, 60K in debt. Part of the reason why I worked in university housing. That taught me college housing is a maze. Limited options, safety concerns, the rising costs of both on and off campus housing, and 44% of students struggle to find a roommate every year. College, the top 175 colleges in the US can only house 20% of undergrads. College administrators lack resource to support all students' housing needs. And property managers face fair housing law hurdles in meeting this need. Which is why we provide a college housing rental marketplace for colleges both on and off campus housing needs. Students can find housing, roommates, and build credit. Plus, college admins and landlords get dashboards. All parties win. EDU Rain gives colleges an off-campus housing marketplace for free, connecting colleges and property managers for free. Students can find housing, roommates, and build credit. Property managers benefit from premium ad placement, rent processing, and a co-marketing tier with service providers like renter's insurance and TransUnion for background checks. We have a freemium model for universities where they can pay to list their on-campus housing, which is why we are targeting the 64 billion global college housing market. But we're starting with the 5.3 billion US market first, which is our service obtainable market. And in fact, in that service attainable market is $530 million in annual revenue. And with colleges like Cal Poly being a part of the 900 colleges that are in our song. There's never been anything like EDU Rain. I know, I've looked. <laughs> and uh, you, uh, for doing both on and off campus housing with a free credit building for both on and off campus housing. Uniting all stakeholders under one platform, making us best in class. In the last 12 months, EDU Rain has steadily grown, serving five U.S. markets with users from 41 countries, and we ended 2023 with over $2 million in revenue and LOIs. We're in talks with 15 colleges right now, and one of those being Cal Poly, bringing an additional 21,000 students yearly to the marketplace. So, you know, EDU Rain is killing it, y'all. <laughs> Uh, and there, we found there's a need between three segments, small to mid-sized colleges, public universities, and community colleges. 
And our diverse team understands that well. We have backgrounds in university housing, tech, property management, hotel ownership, and UI UX design expertise. We are a powerful force, supported by college interns, seasoned advisors, and a partnership with Google Cloud for Startups to implement AI to make college housing a seamless experience. <laughs> We are becoming the college housing provider, you know, empowering the next generation with a pathway for financial independence. In 2024, we want to target 75 strategic partnerships to serve as an estimated 100,000 students to give us an annual $2 million in reoccurring revenue just this year. That's why we raised a $1 million seed round. I love, if you know any college administrators, to connect them with us. Thank you very much. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. What you call an icon living? Start a record label, Miss Fish just did it. Whoa. Nylon, cover five minutes. Whoa, we are too hot in the business. Whoa. About to make a movie independent. Whoa. Need new trucks independent. Whoa. I need you to listen to the vision. Whoa. All your verses sound like dirty dishes. We made it, y'all. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Dalzon, and I'm the founder and CEO of Catapult. We're on a mission to increase the number of small businesses on, minor, on um, mass retail shelves. In 1988, my parents opened up a beauty supply store, and I saw firsthand what it took to run a successful small business. I was so inspired by them that I wanted to create the same for other small businesses. But little did I know that this opportunity would lead me into this room with all of you today. Let's flash forward. So in 2016, I started my first company, The Black Owned Market. We were the first of its kind pop-up market exclusively dedicated to black owned businesses, and we created a measurable impact. We circulated over $1 million back into the hands and pockets of New York City small businesses. But as I grew the network to over 500 CPG businesses, I noticed that they all had one common issue, access to affordable capital and getting the money that they needed to grow and scale. Getting into a big box retailer like Target and Walmart is like getting drafted to the NBA. That is a direct quote from one of the small businesses within our network. The reality is, is that many of these businesses want to be on these shelves, but it's not only getting there, it's actually remaining there. They're saddled with six-figure product requests, 60-day payment terms, fulfillment, marketing costs. All of that requires capital. Which is why in 2021, I started Catapult as a solution. Take for instance, our first customer, Folk. We were able to help her secure a six-figure $120,000 loan to get into JC, 300 JCPenney stores. Woo! Yes, Woo! that's great. Um, and according to the SBA, as we did more research, we learned that there are over 1 million minority-owned businesses just like Folk and only 5% of them apply to the over $8 billion in federal government funding for them. So at Catapult, we're entering the market as connectors, connecting small businesses, big box retailers, buyers, to CDFI financial institutions. CDFIs are community development financial institutions, many of them not-for-profits, um, credit unions, traditional lenders, some of whom don't have the biggest marketing budgets to get in front of their customers. So we're a solution for them as well. We're creating a digital ecosystem around these small businesses to listen and understand their needs, serving them Catapult's lending solution at the perfect time in their journey. To date, we've built our pipeline to 500 CPG businesses and have yes, signed a letter of intent with one of the largest CDFIs in the nation. And our business model is such that we take 3% from each loan that we deploy. So we'll take 2% from the lender and just 1% from the borrower. Our team is dynamic and special. I myself am a two-time founder, one-time solopreneur, and I knew I did not want to continue on this journey by myself. So I enlisted the help of experts in the fields of business strategy, commercial lending, as well as operations. By the end of this quarter, we're set to launch a pre-qualification tool, which will enable us to make faster lending decisions. And by the end of this year, we're on track to make $600,000 in revenue and four million by 2026 projected. 
So at Catapult, we're raising 1.5 million. We're already backed by some amazing investors like Techstars, of course, uh, Pharrell Williams, Black Ambition, as well as Mass Mutual Impact Fund. So if you know of any CDFI lenders that are looking to meet pre-qualified customers, please introduce them to Catapult, as well as any CPG small businesses that are looking to launch into big box retailers, introduce us. Thank you so much for your time today. How many of you have been inspired to travel from a video that you saw on TikTok or Instagram? Yeah? Show of hands? Well, me too. But let me tell you, from watching that video until living that experience, I was taken on a journey before I'd even stepped out the door. And it was called trip planning. Three weeks of research, reviews, comparing prices and itineraries across multiple different formats and many different platforms. But guess what? It wasn't easy but I made it to Africa, to hang over the edge of Victoria Falls. Yes, and after posting this video, similar to what had inspired me, I too was flooded with messages of people asking, how do I go do what you did? So I sent them texts and emails and itineraries and videos, and not just for this video, but I did that over and over again through the 113 countries that I have traveled to. And I thought, oh my God, there's got to be a better way. My name is Sally Bunnell. I am a travel addict, a video director, and I'm also the CEO and founder of Navi Savvy, the first platform to book travel through short, authentic videos. We are a community of travelers who upload videos just like these, of places that we recommend, allowing others to be inspired, plan, and book and book through a single platform. So how does this work, you're wondering? Well, users, just like you and I, we take our phone and you can send videos to Navi Savvy. And we pay you a dollar, did you hear that? A dollar for every video that we approve, yes. So once it comes into our Navi Savvy system, we use our patent pending technology and it comes in and it auto tags, it verifies, and it makes each clip bookable. So businesses like airlines, hotels, and even destinations can come in and license that content and use that back in their marketing plans. And advertisers love it because they can directly put their ad dollars right to travelers within our platform. So, do you know, friends and family, you're still the biggest influence when it comes to picking the next destination of where you, we travel. And that's partially because 60% of you are posting videos while you're on your trip. So this footage is called user-generated content, and it gets four times more click-throughs than brand's professional video, which is very costly and time-consuming. You can trust me on that. But from this, what they did is they took user-generated videos and they put them against hotel rooms. And with that, they saw a 30% increase in their sales. So what makes Navi Savvy unique in this? First, our pricing. We have access to wholesale inventory, so that means we can start passing the lowest prices to you as one of our consumers. Secondly, our technology that we talked about, that patent pending, gives us the ability to come in and serve you up videos and itineraries specific to your needs and wants to plan your next perfect vacation. And finally, our partnership with Meta, yeah, Meta. So it allows us to have every video on Navi Savvy be shared to Facebook and Instagram, and then link back to book and build that trip through us. So we are a travel marketplace, and we make money three ways. Content licensing, booking commissions, and advertising. And we give a percent of that revenue back to our creators. 
We are already in the market, and we have 3,000 users who have uploaded 75,000 videos covering 180 countries, and we've already pre-sold $88,000 in content licensing contracts. Yeah, thank you. We see the appetite in the market, and that is for video travel and social commerce. So Navi Savvy has strategically placed ourselves in the middle of these two emerging trends. We are an experienced team that has three exits underneath our belt, and we have come together so we can disrupt the way that you travel. We're seeking $1.2 million for, to expand our team and our technology and go after a full global platform launch so we can get our combined share of the market of $2.5 billion. We're Navi Savvy, and now you know why savvy travelers start here. And you can download Navi Savvy and start making money from your camera roll today. And we have a Tulsa playlist put together right here by this young lady. So check it out for what there is to do in town. Thank you, everybody. I got a really big team, man. What a time to be alive. You and yours versus me and mine. Are we talking teams? Are we talking teams? Are you switching sides? Wanna come with me? Look at the smile on me. Look at the okay, eyes on me. All right, all right. Y'all give it up for those amazing companies. Now, the thing that's really special about this experience, especially for me being a former Techstars founder, is uh, it can feel like a summit. But the best work that they're gonna do and some of their greatest accomplishments are gonna happen next because of some of the people here in this room. I'm Miles Dotson. I've been a founder. I can't stop being a founder. Um, an investor, and I get the pleasure, esteemed pleasure, of working alongside Trey, Leticia, Brittany, James, the mentors, as a VC in residence of this program. And uh, for us, we don't have a problem sounding like a broken record. It, it is critically important that you see that this is an opportunity to support these founders. They've given you a glimpse into their work. The hope is that you look deeply into your networks, your skill sets, your backgrounds, and your excitement about building an abundant ecosystem alongside partners like Build in Tulsa, Techstars, Act House and other players here that have made this the best place to be an entrepreneur. And I, I mean that sincerely. Um, I'm in my 15th year of consecutive entrepreneurship. I raised a ton of capital. I've gone through the, the journey of what they say, the, the trough of sorrows. And this place, in Black Wall Street, this soil has offered an opportunity not only for myself, but for so many founders annually in an unmatched pattern. Uh, so this is not the end of this experience. This is the most exciting part for me because I get to encourage you to lift from your seats, go to the stations around the room, connect with the founders, communicate, find ways to be a link or support there's so many ways that you can be impactful. And as well, take time to meet a new person, connect within the ecosystem. And if you haven't partaken as a mentor or some other type of contributor, let this be the first day that you learn a way to do that. All right? I want y'all to give it up one more time for those amazing companies and founders. I, I want you to give it up for yourselves for being here. And let's have a wonderful uh, rest of the evening. And really quickly, the founders, let's come up and let's take an amazing photo. Uh, and everybody, feel free to move around, network, build, and have community with each other. <laughs> 